안녕하세요. 마스터코스 온라인 라텔 어프로치 컨벤셔널 테크닉 편을 강의하게 된 연세 구축과 김진구입니다. Hello, this is Master Course Director and my name is Kim Jin-gu from the Yonsei Gu Dental Clinic. I'm going to talk about the lateral approach conventional technique. As you know, lateral approach is the most common way for doing sinus surgery and sometimes it's the only way to do surgery. So I have to cover this in a limited time so from incision to suturing. I'm going to go through them step by step. Uh, so first what you need to do is before operation you have to disinfect and you have to do anesthesia and you end with uh, suturing. So I'm going to focus on what are the important steps and others. I'm just going to give you a high level overview. So the first step is disinfection followed by anesthesia. Before operation you do a lot of disinfections and chlorexin um, would be the most popular approach. So through goggles or gauze, you put in uh, chlorhexidine to effectively remove the uh, bacteria in the mouth. So sometimes iodine, like betadine, is used uh, but um, skin uh, disinfection might be effective, but it's not often used in orally. And then anesthesia. So to do lateral approach, uh, basically, you have to do uh, uh, block um, anesthesia. And there are two things to be considered. First is spear avula nerve block, and then greater palatine nerve block. And one thing you never should forget is that on the nerve distribution, the it's up to the distal buccal uh, root on the upper first uh, molar. So you have to do incision or window opening. Uh, you have to also um, think about uh, anesthesia for nerves. And for the great palatine side, you have to do, do nerve block. And when you uh, do have to do incision and have to do flap elevation, you have to consider which side you are going to do them. And one thing I want to also emphasize is that uh, you cannot use short needles. Uh, when you do anesthesia, be it upper or lower, you have to, especially on the upper side, we have to do on the upper part. And it, can stuck on the zygoma side. So you have to do it with the long needle. So most patients or most uh, dentists do anesthesia in this uh, area, but long needle, more than 70% uh, upper and the vestibule side, that side is the point where you do the anesthesia. So you have to disinfect it and then you have to done anesthesia, then third step is doing incision and flap elevation. So often you use horizontal and two vertical incisions. So let's look into the detail. First about horizontal incision. Uh, on, you have to put approach more palatal than the surgical site. So on the from the mid crystal you have to go a bit toward uh, inside. So, because you cannot hold on to the uh, uh, flap, so it's more convenient. And then you use vertical incision. On the mesial, you have to go long. On the distal side, it's better to keep it short. Of course, if it's too short, or the vertical incision margin on the upper side is on, up to only lower on the musical gingiva side, the flap will not be fully elevated. So being on the long, too long, you should not do it on the distal side. This is very important. This is because of the blood vessels like uh, from the, uh, you have the extra osseous branch of the posseous superior of the artery. And on average, that's about 23 millimeters. And with the vertical incision, sometimes it's cut. Hence, if it's too long distal uh, incision, then it could cause arterial artery bleeding. So on the distal side, you shouldn't go too long. On the front side, in most cases, uh, there are not much to damage and a tumbling. So long is okay, but not try not to be too excessive. So again, this is patient on the up 
uh, front side long incision and shorter on the distal side and horizontal leaning uh, palatal side and circular incision is a must uh, so so that there will be no flap tear but uh, there will be clean detachment then you will open flap like this the depth of the incision compared to it, a flat will be wider so it would open more upper side so sufficiently uh, there will be uh, surgery access uh, secured so sometimes you use too small instrument but after opening the flat Minnesota and Seldin needs to be used so that uh, there will be sufficient dissection and this is much better uh, for good visibility Next um, is window perforation. You have opened the flap and the bony wall has been exposed. So you have to do, sur to do surgery, you have to make window. So you use different instruments. So which side you have to make window is the key, uh, should be the uh, key focus. So where it would be the best uh, suitable site? I'm not trying to make a laugh, but this is Monk Kungye. And um, he has a very, uh, looks at things very closely so anyways if you open plat you see something that is different so it, here white pattern patent and it's very smooth but some other side there is bleeding there is uh, also uh, some soft tissue that has become detached and you know hence you have uh, bone bleeding so of course there is a borders and this is where you have to make window so if you look close then this site is there is a border and color wise texture wise it's a bit different that is where you need to make window like this so always you have to look at the panorama picture to see where is the where the window needs to be and where the uh, lower part of the window needs to be and if you see very closely you can uh, know and one more case this area there is bleeding there is irregular uh, you know, detachments, but upper side, there's a, a lot of more patents. So this is, again, therefore, area where you have to make window. So again, like this very elongated window can be made here, uh, like this. Hence, where you make window, uh, you take CT or panorama photo as a reference to choose the site, but you also need to check intuitively with your own eyes. And that is important. Then exact uh, site, where is a good site? There are different opinions, but I think general view seems to be, if possible, more on toward the front side. So on the sinus side, where you want to make window closer to that and closer to the inferior margin, they say it's more favorable. And lengthwise, so for convenience of the surgery, for the instrument accessibility, the uh, distance is uh, set. The height needs to be at least five millimeters. Otherwise, uh, the instrument cannot move freely inside. I said making uh, cha surgery challenging. So if you're new to surgery, it's better to make wider or bigger window. And once you become comfortable, you make your own may and customize the size uh, to your uh, preference. But again, toward the front and closer to the inferior margin is key because various perforation on the medial side and here on the inferior side, you see a lot of uh, these things. So let's look at actual case. For this patient, where sh should we make window? Number 20 is not a good condition, so you have to extract the tooth. So you should extract two uh, teeth. Where should the window? If the sinus and inferior margin, then this black area is where the window needs to be. But if you make window like th this, if you detach membrane here, there could be some tear. So if possible, the implant uh, on the middle of where, where the implant will be placed on the front side it's better to be closer to the sinus inferior margin but if you want to take out number four and five then you know the is this the limit would be extended and the the front part will be the same but with experience uh, you can of course always make better decisions so you make window and membrane exposed 
and this will be the borderline for sinus. I don't think this is a best option. If it's closer, maybe it would have been better. But anyway, when you open window, you have to be also cautious of, you know, I talked about the, when you have distal extraosseous anastomosis and cerebral alveolar arteries, laceration is something to be uh, cautious. But when you make window here, going through the bone on the sinus side, membrane side, you go inside or you go through the uh, inside window, there's interosseous uh, branch. There could be problem there. Actually, all intraosseous anastomosis, it naturally goes through bone at least one. The importance is when it goes through the bone. Sometimes seven or nine uh, where there's no window, you go inside uh, like that on the distal side and goes with the membrane and on the uh, front side it goes to the bone again. Or if you have, uh, sometimes it actually goes through the uh, on the uh, center or the midline side. So you have to check with the CT, but if it happens during surgery, it becomes uh, very hard to see, there could be bleeding, extend the surgical time. So artery location needs to be always checked uh, for the window preparation. That's very important. And I said before, if it's wider window, it's very much visible, but the smaller the window, there is more bony wall on the inside and it's blocked more from the exterior environment and the literature said it's better for bone formation so wider in the beginning but once you become experienced it's better my recommendation is that you make the window smaller so which instrument uh, needs to be used so most popular ones would be the straight low speed handpiece and round burr Sometimes you also use last kit and piezo surgery as an instrument, and sometimes you could also use high speed. Uh, but um, you, when you ask a lot of people, they say uh, low speed and round burr uh, is the straight instrument. They say it's most convenient and the best option. And for me also, I always use the uh, low speed, of course, high speed bar. Sometimes it's clean cut and has a higher vibration, but this advantage is that it has, there is a curve. So when you access here, cheek or zygoma uh, can be uh, damaged, so it's hard to access very um, uh, correctly, so it's difficult to apply controlling uh, force. So if possible, I use straight a low uh, piece, speed piece. That's my recommendation. There are different sizes. You start off with four or number six, and once become comfortable, move to number two, I believe, is the uh, best approach. And rather than freehand, always use finger rest on the uh, front teeth, and that avoid any slippage or damaging other structures. So again, on the front teeth, uh, tooth, you give finger rest. And vertical, if you go in, there could be tear um, in going through to the sinus. So again, um, go from the uh, side and rather than giving a vertical force force it's better to give side force and here with the drill the wall here when you uh, open it up uh, you we have to be cautious step by step slowly if you grind in the uh, slowly then you see the light bluish hue and uh, that shows that there will be membrane uh, here and until you see that hue you go grinding very slowly like you are painting very uh, cautiously and slowly and when you see this membrane or the bluish hue you open it and if otherwise there could be difference in thickness and and in window preparation, uh, there could be more damage. So again, um, window preparation can be in three ways. You could do infrastructure, uh, infrastructure technique, uh, folding is involved, or you could be grinding out technique. Everything is grinded out. And lastly, you create good wall and you know or take the wall off and after surgery you reposition the wall and that's called wall off technique in most uh, cases they opt for the wall off technique 
and then when you uh, do wall uh, win window uh, off there's always a uh, window or well, some uh, residual window oil uh, and then you do green stick fracture to remove it so when you remove it you have to be very uh, careful as uh, so you have to uh, careful of, of the membrane tear where the, you put in the instrument uh, too fast or too deep so you reposition it afterward and you sometimes put the this in cell line during uh, before repositioning uh, so why do you use wall of technique you have the better access and even if you're not experienced it's very easy to get used to that and very convenient to do this uh, so there are different um, uh, advantages and the lateral wall if if it's thick if you make a window uh, many you can make windows many times so wall of technique is that's why why it's used and another advantage even if if there's a septum inside you can um, avoid a septum in making windows and a septum if it's long then on the upper uh, front side or the back side you can you know separate them in surgery and if it, there's a big septum like this you can uh, detour it and uh, dissect it and uh, meet in the upper part so even if the septum ha is high there's no problem in doing the surgery and uh, it can even create one big, uh, you know, room or window. So number twenty was extracted for this patient uh, before surgery, and as you can see here, there is a high uh, septum, and it's very hard to treat them. You have to do surgery, and so you cannot do simultaneous placement implant because there could perforation when you uh, try to treat the septum. So carefully, you make a big window and dissect on both sides. And if you do that, you can create one big window, and sometimes it's better for ele membrane elevation. So with the, uh, there's a state handpiece advantage just like this. So inside you fill it with the bones and do operation. If it's a low septum, then you can ignore it. So there's a septum, but it's not too high. And on the inside, as you can see, there is a bigger uh, transfer septum and for this patient therefore you open it up back treat the septum and perforation is also uh, handled and you fill it up inside and a long-term basis you can see there's not much of a problem so i'm totally telling you this and showing this case because the biggest concern in natural approach is how to make a window and what to do about septum so special instrument and you might say uh, could be the answer but frankly the best way is the round wear and state hand pieces will be can be used so that um, you can handle any cases in operation and once the experience build with different types of operations uh, you can do it uh, much easier and as i said before there could be bleeding and this side if there is a bleeding always make a window and when you make a window this area that um, is inside uh, there could be a lot of bleeding and then, so you have to be, be mindful of that sometimes you can uh, find everything on CT so like this um, area you have to see it keenly with your eye and see this could be a, a bleeding potential so avoid this area so you have to be mindful of these possibilities always and i said before alveolar from alveolar clays uh, they say it's 16 to 19 millimeters so that's what's often said in journals but it's different from the window uh, shape that is if there's a, a lot of uh, bone resorption or if there's a lot of um, you know the sign is coming down then actually from the residual bone crest to artery the distance is that uh, determined with that so you have to be careful and mindful of different things next is about membrane elevation you have to made made window and uh, you have to push in the bone with after elevating the membrane the membrane tearing is something you should always be avoided and another thing is color and thickness and whether there is a cyst and pathological condition always needs of course needs to check through the ct uh, before operation and also check after making the window also the first thing you need to do 
I see if after assessment you have to separate the member. So a separator, like this type of instrument, like when you push in something down, this round uh, plate uh, can be used. So you put that in the margin and round it up, then it can be cut very easily. So you only cut it on the uh, kind of the border area. And after that, for your elevator, we can lift the sinus side. This uh, special instrument can be used. That's you know, cup, uh, uh, curved by 90 degrees. You can uh, do elevation. So there are different Austin instrument with such uh, angles, and it's very uh, easy to use. This one is better for the mesial side, where the instrument cannot reach uh, very easily. So there are very co various convenience uh, instrument to be used from Austin. So the step is very important. You start off with the distal side and then floor side is the next one. So this will be number two. Next will be on the mesial side. And lastly, once everything is all uh, off and it's a bit, uh, there's less tension, then you go palatal or the medial side. So from the beginning, if you start with the medial or palatal side, there is a lot of high tension. So from closer to the wall, where it's easier to access. And from membrane to bone, the connected strength is the lowest area. Hence, distal area should be your starting point. So always from distal, then the floor side, then your anterior side, and then lastly, palatal side. So the important thing here is this instrument. If it's on the air, it should not be uh, the way. Always it needs to be kept in touch. The edge air, the air side should always be in touch with the bone. If you push it like this, inevitably there will be perforation. So again, the edge or the tip should not be uh, pushing inside. It should always the tip should always touch the bone. Like if you create a crest it, uh, on the pan, um, it's better to go inside, like uh, this uh, direction, uh, to uh, for uh, to take things out. So how much elevation? There are different uh, theorists, but many agree that the bony war, if it's uh, the more the bony wall, the more favorable area it is for bone inf uh, formation. This means that on rather than this case, like this, full detachment, so securing more the uh, bone surface is better for the bone blood supply and cell supply. Uh, hence, it's more favorable conditions for, for bone formation. And again, always too little on the palatal side. So it really happens I, for me also, frankly. But rather than that, consistently uh, elevation of, uh, that is on a consistent level throughout is important and uh, better. Now, do you bo put in bone? No, if you have done membrane elevation, then you have to do drill to place implant. So you prepare the implant site, and then you put in bone and then place implant. So there are different approaches, but as you know, on the upper area, the bone uh, quality is unavailable on the posterior side. And if there's a lot of bone loss on its um, extracted side, then the bone density would be weak. So the recommended way would be smaller final drill can, needs to be used for the final preparation. That's more favorable in terms of result. So here, uh, it's including the casket. So to put in 4.0, uh, you only need 2.8 to 3.1. Of course, on the lower uh, posterior, it might be not sufficient, but if the, it's less bone quality and less bo the bone height is low, then you have to think about the stability, so you should not drill too excessively. And when drilling, sometimes you get uh, stuck on the adjacent teeth, especially number 20s. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of uh, block. So 
uh, the path might be ruined if you when you want to place the implants on the left side possible you use drill extension or use long drill that's more I uh, will get your favorable result and after sufficient detachment even the drill tip is touching this area there will be no not much perforation so enough detachment guarantees uh, uh, no sinus member perforation so food uh, enough detachment is important next is bone grafting you have to put in bone and to bone in their different of course ways but we are talking about lateral approach here, so we'll uh, go laterally and there are different types or volumes that's involved but in this lecture I cannot cover everything so I have we have separate lecture on that so please uh, reference that so if you put the bone in then you have to place implant and when you play, place implant, there are different theories. So you could have staged approach or you could have simultaneous um, approach. So is it better to wait uh, in staged approach or is it do it at the same time simultaneously? There are different uh, opinions. This paper came out in 98 and it's related to this is the first consensus conference report on sinus surgery protocol. So this was uh, protocol created in 96. So if it's 10 millimeters, um, it's not much of damage. And if there's that much of um, uh, residual uh, bone, then use sinus flow elevation. And if it's like this, you can do simultaneous. Or if it's one, two, three, then you have to do delayed approach. But uh, my experience tells me, and considering different factors, you, if you can place implant, if there is a, in a instability to be gained, I prefer doing simultaneous placement. If you look at this literature, and which is from Fugazotto, if it, you have less than five uh, bone height, five 110 implant success rate was 97%. So there is no problem in doing simultaneous placement. So for this type of high, even if this uh, augmentation placement success rate was still 100%. If you look at this uh, journal, this is a systematic review, so it's more credible. So simultaneous placement uh, success rate uh, compared to the delayed placement success rate. You, as you can see, there's not much of a difference. Hence, so again, there are different opinions and residual bone height and you know both success rate. What's the relationship? If you have three more than three millimeters, uh, that decreases success rate, or some say there's no relationship. So there are different opinions, but in my personal opinion, at the initial stability is one of the most important factor. So if you have sufficient initial st stability in the implant side, if you have good fixture and good uh, operation uh, skills, uh, then um, I do not believe there will be a lot of issues. So. I think um, primary stability is the key. Without primary stability, um, there could be problems. So using a good instrument, um, you can avoid uh, issues and gain primary stability. So again, I like this. And the new, if bone is formed, then there could be uh, stability going up. So again, by the third or fourth week after operation, uh, this the stability there is a stability dip where the stability becomes the lowest and that results in a lot of implant of failure so again if you cannot gain primary stability it's better to have staged approach but if you have uh, initial stability then you can have submerged and you know there could be successful result so if initial stability is there, then I go with the uh, simultaneous placement. So for this wide or this pitch uh, fixture is used, then on the uh, upper uh, sinus area, you can gain more primary stability. So use this type of instrument. So this uh, windows, you put in Z line and you know s store it, and uh, you can reposition it later. So if there is uh, too much grinding or sometimes it's, you know, uh, disappears, then 
if possible, it's better to cover it with membrane. But sometimes the they say uh, we, you should not do nothing, you know, let it be. So which is better? They compared the two, but in conclusion, they say without lateral wall covering, the success rate actually meaningfully went down. So that's why I'm sharing with you this data. And this uh, literature also says that uh, same thing. So the cover group and non-cover group as you can see, there is a significant difference and meaningful difference of the success row. So if there's no wall, if it's fully grinded, then it's better to cover. The last step is suturing. As for suturing, the vertical, two vertical incisions and one horizontal incision, and this area you have circulations, then you have to you know suture everywhere. But the most important thing is mesiodistal corner side, the key suturing. If you do it well, then flap uh, will be uh, fixed in the position. After all suturing, on if you want to do meso side, but the flap there was a displacement, and you cannot. Uh, cover the uh, front side, that would be a problem. So with the suturing, uh, unless you do GBR uh, together, the buccal flap extends a lot. So the flap, uh, uh, it always can be covered. And you know, flap tension is not really um, that much a problem. But there is a key positions that you need to consider that I pointed uh, as before. So you have to be mindful there. And the most important thing is to, to uh, this areas uh, needs to be uh, very carefully considered to avoid a uh, flap uh, displacement. So if you look for this areas and do that area suturing well, then there will be no flap displacement. So what happens after sinus grafting? Be it sinus graft or GBR, in the beginning it becomes a bit acid. You have blood clot and platelet and fi fibrin, and there will be no vessel as of yet. So bone graft material and platelet will create blood vessels and cytokine that's been formed inside would uh, start the modeling uh, path. And then after day seven, the vessels newly budding, uh, the caterpillary uh, small vessels uh, would be created and microphage also happens. So a lot of destructive activity happens. And on the stem cell side, with the, there's osteoblast uh, divided cells coming in. So here is where there's a lot of osteoclast activations. So during this time, uh, you have this type of different activities. And by day uh, 14, after two weeks, osteoblast activated, creating new bones. And by that time, pH becomes normal, and blood vessels will uh, supply blood. This means up to two weeks after operation, it's acidic and in the sinus area. And because of that, there's not much blood supply inside. So it's very vulnerable to the infection. So more than a week, antibiotics and other things need to be used to protect this area. So suturing needs to be thoroughly uh, done and the surgery should be a uh, traumatic. Uh, so you should, there are different things like this to be considered. So that's my lecture for today. A lot of details are prepared, but um, I think uh, you can uh, learn about that in my offline lecture. Thank you very much.